So I was just uh, welcoming everyone uh, here today with us uh, to discuss climate change and how can you as youth be involved more. Um, we will be starting actually with a video uh, by our colleague Fahad Dehemi uh, to give you a brief on QFFD uh, and our future in the venture with climate change. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Saha, you can refresh me. I'm a researcher at the Qatar Fund for Development, part of the Qatari government, which is focused on helping people in need across the world. When I say people in need, I'm talking about people who may not have the opportunity to go to school, to visit the hospital when they're sick, or get jobs in the way that many of us can. This can be for many reasons. For example, there is war going on where they live. They don't have schools or hospitals nearby, or they don't have the money to be able to afford many of the simple things we sometimes take for granted, like food, water, and shelter. Our job at the Qatar Fund for Development is to try and help these people to live their lives in a dignified and empowered way. We focus on education, health, and helping people get jobs so that they can secure the basic things they need in life. In Syria, people, in particular young people and women, have to deal with the effects of war on a daily basis. Many schools and hospitals have been destroyed, and the effect of war on the economy means that people have lost their jobs or cannot find work. In 2016, we created something called the Quest Initiative. Since it started, we have given around $500 million worth of help to the people that need it the most, helping around 5 million people in Syria every year. The support of the Qatari people has built schools so more children can receive an education, trained doctors so that people can receive life-saving health care, and given the youth of Syria the skills that they need to find jobs in the future. This is just one example, but we do work like this in many countries all around the world. Unfortunately, even with this help, more and more people around the world need support every day. So this leaves us with a question. What can we do to help stop the suffering of people around the globe and give them the opportunity to live their lives to the fullest once and for all? The answer to this question will come from finding new ways of thinking and solving the issues that are placed in front of us. In 2015, the international community developed in 17 goals known as the Sustainable Development Goals. Countries around the world committed to achieving these goals by the year 2030 to make the world a better place. This includes ending poverty, fighting inequality, taking climate action, ensuring all young people get access to quality education and providing health care and clean water to all. We are only 10 years from 2030, which means we have to act right now. These goals are our driving force for improving the living conditions of people around the globe. But sometimes we are faced with complex challenges that make it difficult for many countries to achieve these goals. Challenges like coronavirus, climate change, natural disasters and wars all make it difficult to improve the living conditions of people around the world. And that's why we have to be innovative in the way that we address these changes. Innovation is a great tool to tackle real world problems. It does not only mean inventing new things or using new technology. In fact, it can also mean adapting solutions we already have to new contexts or improving the way we do things to make them better and faster. This is why in 2018, QFFD came together with a UN agency called UNDP to develop what are known as the Accelerator Labs. Through it, we have set up 60 innovation labs in 78 countries where we ask young people and the local community to use their skills and intelligence to find better ways to do things and create fresh ideas and quick solutions that can solve real world problems. Through these labs, young people in Somalia have created reusable masks to use during COVID-19. In the Caribbean, young people are testing new natural tools that can be used instead of single-use plastic as a way to save our environment. Finally, I'd just really like to say that I think it's important that it's not just Qatar Fund for Development's job to help people around the world. It is all of our jobs as youth to make the world a kinder place. You are the future leaders who will change the world. Which one of you will help to figure out how to slow down climate change? Which one of you will help teach children who can't go to school? Which one of you will give up your time to help the people that need it the most? We all have to come together if we want to make the world a better place. It is our ideas that can save lives. We're looking forward to working with you. 
So I wanted to thank actually Fahad for uh, raising a lot of issues. And yes, we are not just facing today coronavirus and uh, the upcoming pandemics, but we are facing a pressing matter with climate change. And it's a matter that not just affecting our lives now, however, it is affecting our future as well. So I would like to actually thank you, Fahad and Saha, for joining me today. Uh, and I would like to first um, introduce myself and then leave the floor for you to also um, introduce yourself for uh, our uh, audience today. So uh, I'm Rumba al Naimi, the International Partnership uh, Coordinator within Qatar Fund for Development. Uh, Fahad, would you start? Hi, uh, I'm Fahad Dehemi. Uh, uh, as you just saw, the development projects researcher. That's the first time I've seen that video, so I'm a little bit embarrassed now, to be honest. Hi, everyone. I'm Sahad Lansari. I'm the International Partnerships Researcher, and uh, we're very happy to be here today. Thank you. I actually never see any video of mine if I took any video. Um, First of all, I would like uh, to thank, actually, uh, reach out to Asia and extend our gratitude for them to have uh, for us uh, such a platform to discuss uh, certain uh, issues, uh, and especially like climate change. Um, we would like to actually encourage you to design um, your, uh, your own outreach uh, project. Um, and we thank you actually for being with us today to show your commitment to this cause and your dedication to be a future ambassador to spread the world, uh, the word on climate change. Uh, during this workshop, we will be discussing the urgent action we need to consider in order to combat climate change and to achieve the SDG 13 the climate finance flow and development and help countries meet their national determination contribution. And how can we ensure accelerate our action towards better migration efforts and adaptation efforts? An example that was already shared by um, um, had earlier today was the Accelerator Lab, which is mapping the solution for different challenges. And we found out recently when we uh, contacted them on what are the issues that the labs are really uh, trying to advocate about, which was climate change and how can we um, try our best to help uh, local communities address certain uh, issues when it comes to climate change. For example, lowering the use of uh, plastic or helping the community adapt to uh, the climate change shocks with innovative ideas. Um, climate change is not just affecting uh, any country, it's affecting every country and every continent today. Weather patterns are changing and sea levels are rising. Whether when the weather uh, event is becoming extreme, we have reached a highest increase in greenhouse emissions in the history. Even the average global temperature is now predicted to be reaching more than three degrees Celsius. The poorest and most vulnerable people are among the, the most affected by climate change. QFFD, for example, is aiming to, ha to help as much through education, innovation, and adherence to our climate commitment. This workshop So for this workshop, we will be providing you with difference of climate change and global warming, the levers and Paris Agreement where QFFD is trying to approach, um, and also uh, the causes of climate change and how we can empower uh, the nation to mitigate and adapt to climate change. So before even we start with what is the climate change, we would like to ask you actually in the chat box, if you can uh, share with us, what is your definition of climate change and what do you consider as global warming? We will be giving you five minutes uh, and then share some of your answers. We also have a poll, so you guys can take the poll as well. 
So we have Musa, a change in the global or regional climate patterns. Uh, Ahmed, uh, climate change basically is based on long-term effect affection of pollution or CO2 emission. It is all about changing the, the perfect condition for creatures to live with ideal environment. Uh, we have a question then. Global warming is unusually rapid increase and in Earth average suffers, sorry, surface temperature primarily due to, due to the green gases greenhouse gases really released. Global warming is continuous increase for the health surface temperature due to the, yeah. I think we should move on since most of the answers are actually correct. Uh, Saha, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So, yes, uh, climate change describe a change in the average condition, such as temperature and rainfall. Uh, global warming actually is, the, is mainly human-caused increase in the global surface temperature and its projected continuation. So, in terms of climate change, it's not just something that we take lightly it's something that we created by our hands and we should as individual and also youth to always try to uh, lower whatever we are doing wrongly when it comes to climate change we have to take an action within and we have to start by ourselves first for us to in order to change the world and it comes to a realization that if we didn't act as person as individual and always think about whomever can uh, help us through either with higher authority or anything else uh, we cannot just rely on on this aspect we have to as well work uh, ourselves uh, to change this climate change is noticed through its effect on human health and well-being through more extreme weather events and wildfires, decreased air quality and diseases transmitted, transmitted by insect, food, and water. When it comes to what, uh, what we are doing as Qatar Fund, when it comes to climate change, we wanted to focus on human development. So when we uh, took up on uh, climate change recently, we wanted to ensure that everything we are doing is actually um, helping uh, to empower uh, individuals to be more resilient, to also uh, find solution from within. For example, as I said, the Accelerator Lab and Innovation. So for our integration of climate change, we will be focusing on education, health, and also uh, economic empowerment in trying to um, help countries um, have a certain job creation and decent work uh, for individuals. Um, as I said, it is a man-made issue now when it comes to climate change. We are not just um, actually thinking about, uh, we are not just destroying uh, what we have now, we are also destroying the future of the generation coming up. So if we didn't act as individuals and also as uh, youth from now to safeguard our future, um, no one to blame but us if we didn't go and try to change from uh, actually our life, our lifestyle, starting with not using plastic, starting to use um, for example, uh, uh, reusable uh, cup, for example. Um, 
I would like to also uh, explain to you what is um, greenhouse uh, gases. Uh, sometimes these kind of definition uh, with the future generation becoming more aware of it, it's a bit too generic, let's say, uh, definitions, but we try to focus on them because we rely on you as well for the future, uh, for our future to be better, for you to transmit such uh, definitions and also to ensure that you are an advocate of such cause and for you to also to contribute to your own community. So, for example, greenhouse uh, gases are um, greenhouse uh, effect that happens when certain gases, uh, which are known as greenhouse gases, accumulate in Earth atmosphere. Greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, and nitrous dioxide, uh, sorry, nitrous oxide, uh, and ozone, O3, and Florentine gases. How are we contributing to the green gas? greenhouse gas. So human activities are changing earth natural greenhouses effect. Burning fossil fuels like coal and oil puts more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. NASA has observed increased in the, um, in the amount of carbon dioxide in some, some other greenhouses gases in our atmosphere. Too much of these greenhouses can can cause the earth atmosphere to trap uh, more and more heat. This causes earth to warm up. Greenhouses are gases that can trap heat. They can get their, na their name from greenhouses. A greenhouse is full of windows that, is, that let the sunlight in. So basically what we are doing in our daily life, we are just uh, tra trapping uh, the heat and the, uh, raising the temperature uh, from within. Things that we have it on a basis, it's part of our economy actually, factories, transportation, cutting down trees to absorb, uh, that absorb uh, CO2, electricity, water consumption, degradation of the mangroves. And I stress here the importance uh, of mangroves since uh, I would like to share with you a success story when it comes to Mauritius. Uh, as you know, in Mauritius, um, one of the problems when it comes to a climate change effect, it is the erosion. And the mangroves are very unique and very helpful when it comes to uh, the ecosystem and our um, uh, uh, to the ecosystem in terms of how they are uh, uh, very good at subsequent, uh, sorry, sequestering, <laughs> entrapping carbons. They store five to more, uh, five to eight times uh, more carbon than tropical or uh, barrel forest. Uh, first in the ecosystem actually, and they are also important to both humans. Uh, they can provide food, uh, wood and fruits and also for animals especially um flamingos if you can, if you have visited here in uh, doha uh, we have the mangroves uh, like, uh, in uh, the khira uh, where you can actually see how beautiful these trees are becoming and how important for them to uh, help with climate change mitigation and adaptation so in Mauritius, these women have uh, successfully actually um, uh, planted these trees, and now they are considered one of the uh, aspects that help Mauritius uh, to mitigate uh, erosion and also uh, help and uh, help them mitigate. Uh, the atrocity, let's say, when it comes to um, cyclones and flooding, because they are very strong and uh, also uh, help to uh, uh, to help lower the impact of such uh, cyclones. 
Uh, now I would ask uh, Fahad to uh, continue. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rada. That was that was really really great. And also, I just want to say uh, that was really amazing. Some of your answers then about climate change. Um, it was really impressive to see how how much understanding is already there um, in the crowd. Um, so I'm going to talk to you uh, today about some of the reasons why we should care about climate change. As you can see on the first uh, uh, the first sentence on the slide, it says because the future of the planet is on the line. And I mean, when we we hear stuff like that, it's kind of a, a really big idea to wrap our head around. And sometimes we can get lost in how huge of a picture this is. So I wanted to think about some of the ways that we can understand how it affects us on an individual level. Um, and I'll, I'll start with the most important thing for me, which is coffee. I don't need to do an, a, a poll again now to know how many people here love co coffee. It's central to Arab culture. It's central to Qatari culture. And climate change already means that coffee farmers are finding it hard to make this coffee that we, we know and love. Um, and I, I can't speak for all of you, but uh, I'm not sure I'd be able to live without my morning coffee anymore. Um, I'm, I'm also sure that we have lots of animal lovers and maybe scuba divers tuning in from around the world. Um, and climate change means that we are we're unfortunately destroying the places where we can go and see this beautiful wildlife living under the sea or living freely in a jungle. Um, I bet that many people ha here have dogs and cats and climate change means that animals just like them are having their homes destroyed all around the world. Um, we see many of these effects of climate change already, but in the future, all of these things could be far worse. I'm sure many people attending this call will have families and children of their own one day. And it's important to remember that this is the world that we all have to live in forever. We can't just go to the car showroom and pick up the newest model, unfortunately. Uh, in the same way, our children and their children or our nieces and nephews will have to live in this world that we create. So um, if we move on to the next slide, um, all of the things that I just mentioned, they're, they're really important, especially the coffee. I think we should remember the coffee, but I th thought it was also really important to tell you about some real things that are happening right now to people around the world. Uh, people in many places that the Qatar Fund for Development works, uh, works with are dealing with all of these things that you can see right now on the screen. Um, I mean, right now, if possible, I'll tell you a few stories of some of the things that I've seen with my own eyes. Uh, just uh, last August, I went on a trip to Sierra Leone. It's a really beautiful country in the west of Africa, if you haven't heard of it. Uh, and it rains there for nine months of the year, which is unheard of in Doha. So it was amazing to go and see this beautiful, this beautiful rainfall. But unfortunately, in 2017, they had a very, very rainy wet season. Uh, and, and it meant that there was a mudslide uh, in the capital city. This is where the mud kind of falls down off the side of the mountains. And uh, I listened to the story of a man that worked in one of the rescue teams that had to save people from this really horrific thing that happened. And I saw real sadness in that man's eyes. Uh, and I still get emotional now to this day when I remember the stories that he told me. Then at the end of that trip, I remember I got on the airplane and halfway through the airplane ride, I started feeling really ill. I don't know if my colleagues remember uh, here who are on the call with me, but uh, I was rushed to hospital the next day and found out that I had malaria. And I don't know if anyone else has ever had malaria, but it feels like you've been in a car crash. I was very sick. I spent a week in hospital. I was, but you know, the one thing is that I was incredibly lucky to have access to a hospital and have access to that kind of healthcare. And many of the people in the in developing countries, the countries that we work with, don't have access to those kind of things. So climate change, uh, what it does is it, the, the change in temperatures mean that in lots of these countries, mosquitoes are going to places that they never went before and uh, at different times of the day and transmitting malaria to people who would never other, uh, have got it otherwise. Um, and all of these changes mean it's even harder for these people to receive the help that like, I was really so lucky to get. Um, 
Then just another story. I, I know I, lo I love tell telling stories, but one more story. Uh, th the month before that, I think it was the month before that, I was um, visiting Sudan, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you are, uh, are aware of, there's an area there called Golo. Uh, and when I was visiting there, it, around that area, there were lots of people fighting. There was, um, you, you could kind of hear gunshots in, in the surrounding area. It was a really scary place to live. But the people had just got very used to that. They got very used to living in that way. In fact, they, I, I even had one of the Sudanese guys that we were with, and he called it the, 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 the sound of the gunshots. Shots, they called it the Golo popcorn, because it was like the popcorn that you get in the cinema, just blasting off constantly. Uh, it had just become part of their everyday life. Uh, when we were traveling into this area, we had to take a helicopter and fly high enough that they couldn't reach you with bullets. And as we were flying there, we saw just dry land in all directions for hours and hours. It was it was the it was the dry season when I went there at the time. Um, and so we saw all of this dry land. And then as we land, we went to see one of the watering watering holes that was created by the United Nations. Um, and so, so basically in, in this area, they didn't have access to water in the may that way that many of us are really lucky to have where we can just turn on the tap. It's really scarce. Um, and so they had to drill down kilometers into the floor just to find it. And I was speaking to a, a, a man there and he told me that normally there's a, wad, a, a wadi just nearby. So a, a kind of waterfall where they could go and collect water from. But for the past few years, uh, the water just wasn't there. It wasn't there in the same ways that it was before. Um, so climate change here, as you, you can see, it really leads to effects like this. Uh, and, and these kind of effects can even mean that people fight more because people fighting are, are fighting over resources like the water because they need that water to be able to grow their land. And if there's less of the water, it means more fighting. And really, the most unfortunate part of this is that the people who really suffer are these innocent people inside of that city who didn't choose to be a part of this war, like the, the women, the children and the elderly. And it's these people who are really at risk. So if we just go to the, the next slide now, um, uh, really, as we've seen, all of these things are a real risk that we need to, to, to kind of grapple with. And so we wanted to give you an idea of what we can do um, now, all of us here. So I'll hand over to my colleague, Sahar, and hopefully she can walk you through some ways that you guys can engage um, in the, uh, the work towards climate change. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Fahad, for the amazing stories. Uh, I honestly was uh, very afraid from some of them. <laughs> I'm glad that you made it through safely. And it's very important to realize that there are places like this in the world that need attention and need us to start changing our lifestyle to affect them as well. So how can we get help or how can we help? So on a daily basis, as uh, Fahad uh, mentioned before, everything that we do can affect uh, climate change and affect uh, the CO2 emissions and all like everything that we do has an effect. So here are a few ways that you can help. Plant a tree, turn off the lights when you're not in when they're not in use. A lot of the houses in Doha keep the lights and air conditioning on all the time, 24/7. So you need to really think of this because turning on the lights and turning off the lights, e even that makes a huge effect. Save water and avoid waste. Support businesses with low carbon emission and carbon footprint. Join an initiative to help the climate with climate change. Design your own outreach program, which is something that we're, we're very supportive of. As you can see on this next slide is who can we join locally or what initiatives can we join like ongoing yearly? Um, the Ministry of Environment and Municipal Ar Ar Agriculture and Fisheries Affairs, they plant, they're planting one million trees. So you can join this initiative and start to plant trees, even if it is just in your own garden, but at least to push towards this goal. Number two would be uh, the environmental week that happens every year. And there are multiple companies and a huge variety of activities that happen within Doha uh, that you can join. Uh, for example, um, there, there is Earth Hour that they have every year from, I think, 8 to 9 p.m. They usually have it once a year, just to turn off all the lights to see the huge effect that you make on the world. Initiatives you can join, 
um, locally is like Sustainable Qatar. It's, here are a few, and I'll just uh, mention a few things that you can join from each initiative. Sustainable Qatar, they have 52 weekly challenges, Youth Ambassador Academy, and a photo competition that they have all the time. Greener Future Initiative, Advocate for Earth Week and Sustainable Living. Fasila, Everyday uh, Life and Environmental Sustainability. And then they also had advi Advice and Impact. All of these pages are on Instagram as well. Deep Qatar, which I have beach cleanups, and they're the leading initiative for beach cleanups in Doha and fighting plastic pollutions in Doha, in Qatar. Tadwir, which is utilizing waste and recycling. Youth for Environment, which contributes to achieving environmental vision. Our Hope, which is a youth committee, a community for change. So all of these you can just follow on your Instagram, even if you're like a little bit hesitant to join, but at least if they're there on your feed as a reminder to keep it, like keep in check your recycling or making sure everything is off and contributing to climate change in a positive manner. And then we have a few companies that we can support locally, which is a very good idea, especially that we want to encourage more companies to, to become more sustainable and eco-friendly. You have EcoLeaf, which is packaging uh, that, are, that is plant-based. EcoLife is very similar to it. It's a biodegradable, uh, disposable product. Paper Cut Qatar, eco-friendly packaging. EcoSook, they have reusable fruit and uh, vegetable bags. I think you can find that in every single uh, car for it. Qatar Green Leaders, which they provide workshops for green building and LEED certified uh, uh, certificates for building for architecture. And then we have solar solutions, we have which have solar panels uh, that they can provide to you. And we also have Conserve. Who we can join internationally. So here are a few people, a few organizations you can join internationally, whether you want to take workshops or you want to just learn more about climate change or learn how you can impact you like where you are in your own country these four initiatives would be very very highly recommended we have unicef which is youth for climate change they have a whole page just on climate change with youth youth climate movement youth climate leaders and then we have environment and climate change uh, ymsa so now we'd like to thank you for being with us today to show to show your commitment to the cause your dedication to be a future ambassador and to spread the word on climate change if you please have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them at this time. I think we have more than 20 minutes for questions. So I, I see one question already from Salah al-Masri. Um, and the, the question is, what is the role of youth in climate change in a situation where young people live due to a lack of job opportunities? I don't know if anyone wants to answer. I think we can, uh, both of us actually, uh, answer such questions. And uh, climate change, if, as you change when it came, it came as well with, let's say, a bit of positive uh, effect to job creation since uh, there is an impact when it comes to new um, tools of renewable energy uh, or even for farmers to be um, having certain uh, aspect of uh, new uh, jobs or um, new opportunities, let's say. Uh, if you can, um, it's... It is called like a green economy when it comes to climate change and uh, having new opportunities. And as youth, for example, uh, you can join an internship in such uh, projects uh, available, or you can join. Within your campaign, uh, advocate and to also um, seek uh, the community let's say, um, commitment towards climate change and to empower within uh, within the community to have uh, leaders or ambassadors to uh, try to have more attention to, cl to climate change. 
And as I said, there is an opportunity when it comes to climate change. There are uh, opportunities of job creation and actually a whole new sector when it comes to uh, available uh, opportunities. Uh, Behad, would you like to add something? No, I, or I mean, just one, one thing really briefly. I think we're so connected now. We all have phones everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It, we, when I go to some of the, the, the toughest places uh, in the world to, to live in, and people are all connected. People, I was in uh, here, another story. Sorry, I told you I like telling stories, but I was in, in the, the Gambia at a petrol station in the middle of nowhere, and someone started listing Qatari cities to me. They said, Rayyan, Asad. And I was so, I was like, how, what is going on? I was so confused. And they said, oh, we have BN Sports. Like we watch BN Sports. So, so, so we live in this world now that's so connected. So as we can see, I can see in, in the, the chat now, people talking about Facebook pages. And I saw it at the beginning. We have access to the, the ability to, to really change things. And, and you have a constant ability to have your voice heard. So really go out there and, and, and do that. I mean, it's been, it's been um, unbelievable, particularly. I've seen also questions geared toward what, what can we do in the Middle East at the moment? We've seen the unbelievable power of, of, of social media in the Middle East. So don't be, don't be afraid to have your voice heard. As, uh, as um, uh, Greta Thunberg, the young lady who speaks all the time in climate change, uh, she, she always says, she's she's furious you know she says how dare you to all these people how dare you do these things so really kind of use that voice that you hear inside of you use the things that you see around you because people want to hear it and that's what changes people's minds when you hear really about the impact that's going on around you i think and most importantly for you to also work within uh, in terms of uh, changing themselves, their habits, and how can they, uh, for example, as I said, use less plastic, use, um, uh, try to raise awareness and how can uh, they help even, let's say, um, their parents and their household as well to or water, or as uh, Saha said before, um, we see all of these buildings at night, uh, still um, the light is on, even though no one is actually working uh, at this hour, and we can save as much as we can while we can uh, share or shed the light on uh, such a problem. Um, we can start as small as we can, and uh, the impact would be uh, even bigger if we joined uh, as youth uh, with everyone else uh, with a certain message to share. I, I see another really good question here. Um, uh, and it's something we, we forget a lot of the time when we sit and do these conferences, but it says, um, the, the question is saying, uh, how can we expand things like this uh, to benefit more youth who don't have the ability to reach and join because of their poor conditions, especially in developing regions? Yeah, this is a really important question. I'm, I'm glad that someone asked this. Any, anyone want to, to go in on this? I think maybe like you can start uh, your, your own initiative from where you are, you know what I mean? Like for you and the people around you, uh, maybe, for example, to start recycling, like it could be as small as recycling or giving back to the environment by planting a tree or, you know, like small things that you can change at home. Um, like that's that's what I have to add. <laughs> I, I, I'll say that COVID was a really good time for us at Qatar Fund for Development in terms of not a good time. It's, it's been horrific, but it really forced us to reassess the way that we try and work with people who are in areas that you can't get to. So, for example, we speak about innovation and technology. We realized that a lot of the time, because we were innovating so much, it meant people were kind of left out. So when we were trying to do education, we found out that actually innovation was going back to radio and going back to television, things that people had access to because not everyone had access to the internet. But uh, it also means that we it's very important for us now to make sure that we can bridge that, that gap 
make sure that people have access to, to internet. It, it, it will be very soon, I believe. Honestly, it, it should be made a human right now because it's, it's, uh, it's a huge leg up to have access to, to, to internet. I think to add to that, uh, can be simple as when COVID-19 hit, uh, there is a better air quality, there is uh, less uh, travels uh, going on. Most of our import uh, uh, doing well with less impact to the environment as well. There's a great uh, comment here from Ahmed who says, we heard a lot from the media about atmosphere, but unfortunately we did not notice it on the global temperature recovering after the COVID pandemic. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. highlight, highlight that as well. You can see what happens when we stay home and uh, we don't go out so much. And that it's a really good point that you brought up. I think there is a, a question uh what about the countries that are facing both conflict and climate change? Um, how can we support the youth to handle uh, the situation? I mean, climate change itself is uh, destroying uh, the uh, making uh, things a bit harder. If you take the Syrian conflict, one of the things that really hand, taking a toll on the lives and uh, ending up uh, by killing a lot of people, which is winterization. Winterization is, cr is happening since uh, we have a very um, uh, high temperature when it comes to uh, the summer side and when it comes to winter since due to climate change. It's uh, really uh, very low, and uh, people there with less, let's say, uh, accessibility to um, uh, warming uh, tools when it comes to simple as fire and others. We try as QFFB to address such uh, challenges, and uh, in terms of looking uh, at uh, such interventions to uh, let them uh, learn how to cope with such uh, constraints, uh, to uh, be uh, as a sort resource person when it comes to uh, future-wise uh, our uh, next, let's say, uh, intervention when it comes to winterization. We already have empowered these uh, people with means of production to help them. So um, in terms of specific youth, um, as I said, you can simply uh, start as small as you can with, uh, within your household. So uh, I think one last question maybe, we may be over time actually, but uh, I, I think Roda will love answering this question. We just had, um, had um, <laughs> A question from Noor Al Thani. She says, "What are the QFFD's efforts on response to climate change?" <laughs> Thank you. Um, in regards to climate change, as I said, we are uh, focusing on human de human development. As uh, QFFD would like to focus on giving hope and promoting peace through inclusive development. So. Our approach to climate change is to actually build the resilience of the people and empower them within when it comes to uh, adaptation, let's say, uh, when it comes to our intervention in health and others. As uh, Fahad already reflected on, uh, let's say, uh, the malaria and how mosquitoes are traveling uh, beyond uh, its normal reach due to the high uh, temperatures. So for this, um, it comes to, and we are trying to um, uh, help. And also we will be starting, as I said, again, with, within uh, our intervention to also check if we can um, go through our health centers or upcoming intervention when it comes to health to empower um, the local contractors to have solar plates or something that they can use uh, and help lower uh, the carbon emissions. Right. I, I think we've finished our time, right? I'm not mistaken. 
think we unfortunately still have we still have four minutes we have uh, 10 minutes almost 10 minutes almost oh, yeah. okay great well then we can say also uh, that I'm, I'm i'm actually really happy um, we're, actually, lucky enough, we're, we're lucky enough to um, say that all um, of actually, QFF, yeah all of qff's responses we 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 we're, we're very thankful that um sheikh uh, sheikh hamad al thani was lucky enough to pledge 100 million dollars towards combating climate change so all of the work that we're doing is based around that and we we're, we're really thrilled to be able to say that as a country and it's really pushed forward this agenda it's the reason why conversations one of the reasons why conversations like this are happening in qatar so we're delighted to be able to yeah. do things like this and to stress his highness actually uh, pledge was uh, towards uh, the small island developing state and ldcs and particularly these countries and why uh, this pledge was uh, set for uh, these special countries is due to the uniqueness that they contribute less to the carbon emissions and they are when it comes to climate change. So, uh, flooding, it will tumble down their whole economy since at the end of the day, these countries are dependent on uh, fisheries, on uh, tourism, for example. Um, so, and also to begin with, some of these countries has a very vulnerable health system and other factors as well to um, and they call them as chronic development challenges and with climate change just amplifying such uh, already uh, within uh, development challenges so uh, this is um, we are very thankful actually for such a pledge uh, um, and we hope that we uh, uh, as QFD and also as the state to So I'm actually eager to know uh, from our audience uh, if they have any experience they would like to share or um, a movement they already started with. Uh, and I think we only have the Q&A uh, for them to share uh, as we have a few uh, minutes left. I would really encourage to know, uh, encourage uh, you uh, to share with us what you have uh, accomplished or something you would like us uh, to highlight or um, spread the message around, especially when we are speaking about climate change and the youth involvement as well. I, I see a good comment a little further up by uh, uh, Sivaraman, who says, um, at this sta stage, our youth generation um, is involved. It could be involved in every sector. Youth p play a crucial role in combating climate change. Young people who can adapt to spreading the new habits and technologies are well placed to contribute to the fight against climate change. Really great statement, I think. Yeah, I can agree more. Um, and Bethana here has made a uh, has actually asked a quick question as well. As you know, there is a decrease in the support provided to international organizations due to co uh, corona pandemic. Um, and this has affected many young people. They've lost their job. Is there a perception of you to promote these young people and take advantage of their capabilities until the end of this pandemic and return to normal? You know, this is a really interesting part of the work that we do, actually. In fact, if you look at um, the Qatar Fund for Development's logo, the Qatar Fund for Development's logo was designed by refugees remotely. So one of the things that we're really looking at when we look at our economic development strategy is, is a, about how we can use the internet to try and harness uh, these people uh, around the world and, and harness these people that, like you said, may be in areas where they've lost their jobs. But then through the te technology, it may be possible for them to still find employment around the world. So it's about building these up from the from the bottom all the way to the top. Like we, we discussed earlier, m some people don't have access to Internet or computers in that way. But we have projects, for example, we have a project with an organization called Spark working out of uh, in, in uh, around the Syrian uh, crisis. And um, they do exactly this. They have uh, online platforms to try and connect people 
to jobs around the world so that they can find employment. But it is for sure, it's a really good thing to bring up. I'm so glad you brought it up because this is uh, definitely something that is on our horizon. It's something that's very important to us and it will become our future at QFFD. Yeah, it's actually one of the things that we prioritize, the inclusion of youth and also inclusion of local community when it comes to our interventions. Um, I actually, even in our assessment, let's say, we also focus especially on local uh, community involvement and how can we empower them within. So thank you so much for the question, actually. Let me scroll down to the question since we have three minutes and to see if there is something we can answer. There's another one, uh, Rauda, um, from Nora El Thani, and she says, from your experience, what are, you, are the most important SDGs? Well, you're asking the wrong person to prioritize, because for me, uh, SDGs are interesting. And they are all of them uh, important because uh, for me, I cannot overlook uh, no poverty where uh, no poverty is linked to SDG 8 where job creation and helping people uh, getting jobs and um, end their poverty or uh, ensuring that they have sufficient food when it comes to um, uh, zero hunger. It's a very hard question. I cannot prioritize any SDG over the we do, uh, for example, pay sector when it comes to uh, QFFD. However, even our intervention when it comes to pay sector, we try to include most of them. Right, it's a really difficult question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I was really hoping someone would share an experience from the ground, like a there's a nice comment here from Hassan. I believe that youth are more energetic and vital and have the ability to move the wheel of change in proportion to the nature of the job, the natural climate or the working climate in an ad hoc manner in cooperation and organizations or through their personal efforts. Well, I couldn't agree more, especially when it comes to the fund. Uh, most of us are uh, young, uh, uh, even fresh graduates who... who uh, working with KFFD and um, we are building uh, our capacity from building and start actually from scratch, let's say. I think maybe that's a, a good way to round off the yeah. comment with, uh, from Aldrin who says, Corrective, uh, collective revolution for climate change needs collective intelligence. And that's exactly what we, we're getting to do now, I think, which is really nice. Share our experiences, hear from each other. So thank you guys. Thank you. As I always say, we always need a collective approach to anything. We cannot just do it uh, alone. And we always uh, encourage you to always uh, be part of your community and also try to encourage and advocate uh, on uh, behalf of everyone. And uh, encourage you to be a very proactive uh, member everyone and we exceeded the time so uh thank you for head and thank you Saha, for joining us today as well for the workshop and looking forward for an upcoming workshop next year and, and thank, thank you all for, for such a platform and thank you all for being very active participants yes thank you guys thank bye -bye. you bye we trust that you enjoyed your last Be Empower 2020 workshop and that you've learned new knowledge, skills and attitudes around our conference theme of youth mobilization for inclusion, peace and security. We hope that you feel informed, inspired and even empowered. We're almost at the end of an incredibly engaging and empowering five-day program of webinars, town halls, keynote speeches and workshops. We'll take a quick 15 minute break, but please come back for our closing ceremony that will wrap up the outcome for the Be Empower 2020 conference. The session can be accessed on the keynote tab on your dashboard 
And as always, don't forget to share your thoughts about the conference using the Empower 2020 hashtag. See you soon.